about uh, you are the King of Kings and Lord of Love. We appreciate the love upon our life for all your being. Be thou exalted in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. God bless you, be seated. This morning we'll be discussing ridiculous things. We'll be talking and discussing on the subject that says ridiculous things. Praise the Lord. I say, praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. I say, we are talking about the close faith. He said, faith is not having confidence in God's ability to do things we know that is possible. But demonstration of our confidence in the Lord's ability for what we have known that is not possible for man. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said again, that faith is not having confidence in God's ability to do things we know that is impossible. It is possible we know if I am not trusting God because I know I've already eaten. But I'm trusting God for what I know that is beyond human ability. It's only God that will do it for me. Can I hear that amen? Yeah. I say demonstration of our confidence in God's ability to do those things that are impossible. I say if it's relying in God to do those things, that reserve only for God alone. Relying in God to do those things that is only reserved for Him to do. That's what it means by faith. And you find out that it says faith brings everything within our reach because God extends our reach. Faith brings everything to our reach because God has extended our reach. Praise the Lord. That's why as a child of God, you need how to know how to step out in the word of God and act on the word of God. Any moment you face challenges in life, you know how to step out the word of God, face it. First Samuel chapter 17, 37. And then he said, moreover, the Lord has delivered me out of the paws of the enemy, lions, out of the paws of the deer. He will deliver me out of the hand of this Christian. And so I said, the God and the Lord be with you. Now the reason why Israelites they first saw the king of Israel because they wanted him now to be the champion and the leader of Israel. But unfortunately, the case was not the same because from the beginning we find out that Saul had fought a lot of fight for Israel and won. But this particular one, you find out fear gripped Saul. He couldn't face Goliath. He was afraid of facing Goliath. He was so timid to face Goliath. And therefore, he was making it who can be able to face so sad, so person. Like so many of us who face trouble in life because of we allow the fear to keep us up. Not remembering the Bible said, Fear not, I am always with you. You're going to look for solution where there is no solution. I pray that God Almighty will release his power in our spirit being to be able to conquer in Jesus' name. Amen. He said, The Goliath wake up 14 days and morning and night. To make us of Israel in the valley of Ever, he can come here to make more. Who among you that is a warrior? Come and face me. Bible says, Saul himself will hide himself. All the soldiers will hide themselves. Everybody is afraid. They see a man that is nine feet challenging them and telling them to come out. If Barbecue, if you will conquer us, will be your slave. But if you conquer you people, you will be our slave. That being a slave is a fear that grip all the Israelites, even the king. And the king has fought a fight for many years, but he's afraid. And every moment there's a such a trouble in your life, know there's a death with a destiny. God wanted to make a way for you. Whenever you see also one good problem in your life, don't be afraid. Bible says, nothing move until you speak. Learn how to speak to every situation in your life. Hallelujah. Saul was afraid to challenge the tough man, Goliath. One of the problems of God, but God had done so many efforts for Israelites. But the problem of Saul is now that Saul was overtaken by fear. The fear already eating up his heart. He couldn't be able to mount the courage to be able to face this man that had been on for 40 days, morning and night. So you never know, see a kind of problem or face challenges where you find that you are enemy going to speak and come to me in the eyes. And you don't know how to face your enemy. Some of us will ask questions that is God really still in existence. All I will pray, God never answered me. He will answer, he wanted it to be consistent and persistent. 
And before you know it, the answer will come. Praise the Lord. Saul was overtaken by the fear, and fear will, will overtake your destiny if you allow it. If you allow fear, it will overtake your destiny. Your destiny is not guaranteed because you cannot override your will. Your destiny is not, of, not guaranteed on because you cannot override your will. And God can never break a rank of breaking your will. Yes. And that is why you will stand on your face, not being afraid of the enemy. Any moment the fear knocks on the door, same faith, let him go and answer you. And you find out there's nobody in that particular door. Praise the Lord. Destiny is not preferred destiny, X for you. Destiny is a preferred design end for you. God has preferred this other end for your life. I was discussing with the brother, they said, you know that the building they have is just a grace. There are some people that come with a lot of money. They are made millionaires, but they couldn't have a house. And it's true. I see a person that don't even have a three-bedroom room, a three-bedroom apartment. He has it. It's a grace. It's not because you are quite poor or you made a lot of money. No. It's a grace. So fighting to conquer your enemy, you will now find and now cleave to the grace of God that I give to you by standing on your face. Let someone stand by your face. Praise the Lord. God will his plan of your destiny, his plan to you, or your destiny about your destiny to you. You have to allow to roll with it. When God reveals to you what you are going to be in life, you don't need to sit down. I remember at the beginning, God gave me a whole quotation, three quotations. One, one is bad, two is good. I remember first Samuel chapter two, eight and nine. I remember Proverbs chapter six, six, seven and eight. He said, go and look at the ants, learn from his way. I have to run my way. You know one that is not to talk about? Like Jeremiah 50, I think so, or 51, talking about passion life. I have to run by faith. I remember that time I called one of my friends. He's a prophet. I said, look at this. He said, yeah, this. Everything about that particular prophecy can change in a minute if I will trust in the Lord. He said it can change today. If not until such and so time. I still not pray because I believe God can change my life. God can change anything. God can change anything that are negative in my life. Only by standing on your faith. God can make this particular situation. Even this particular time, like Elijah said, I know the, the, the water of this particular city is good. But now, is very bitter. It can be changed. With what we are seeing as a situation of our country, by reason of faith, it can be turned around for our good. By trusting and standing on our faith. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord somebody. You cannot avoid tests that God allows in your life. You can never avoid tests that God allowed in your life. It is impossible. There are some things God has allowed in our life in order to build up to be stronger. You cannot pray it out. I remember years back when I was praying that I'm not going to do any business. In six months time, from that to six months, we are not going to do any business. I recall one of your brothers and the brother said, Kings, we are going to pray that God will cut out three months. You rest a little bit. After you pray. I said, no, let the six months go the same way. I don't want after three months, I enter after three months. That time, what happened that you say the goose? And you said 20,000 naira. Already before sending that 20,000, you are reading that 20,000 naira. You are using the money to go and pay. The little money, you got to use the money to go and buy other goods. It was happening like that. I just said, stand and stand with me. If you can stand with God in this particular time, there's nothing that is impossible around you. Remember, it's a lot demonstrating your confidence or your inability of God that what is possible. Or demonstration of our confidence in the ability of God, or what we see that is impossible with men. That's what is called faith. I believe this thing with men, it is not possible, but with God, all things are more possible. I believe they told me I don't have a room, but I know I'm going to carry a baby. They told me I'm not going to succeed, but I know through by the power of God, I'm going to make it in life. Standing on your faith. If you are living a life in your presence, but David is a little boy standing in front of a man, a nine feet old man, nine feet. David was looking up to him like this. The man was looking down on David. I will smite you. I will kill you. I may ask somebody. Maybe there's some situation in your family, maybe in your relationship, maybe in your job. 
maybe your business. There are so also one family in your presence that you look as you say, it cannot go down. But if you start on your faith with God, all things are more possible. Any moment God shows up in our life, the next thing that happens, Satan will be ashamed. Hello? Well, God will allow you, first of all, to check up on you. How do you now handle that situation? Is the situation you see in your life going to make it to run away from God? Or is it going to make you to trust God more and more? And I believe that God will encourage you to trust Him more and more in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. He said, the Israelites allow anxiety to eat them up. No mind is that God has made a promise they are going to conquer the Philistines. Sometimes the problem that comes to your life, God has spoken to us, I'm going to give you victory. But because of the way the thing has become meaningful, I'm saying, any moment you are anxious for God, God will never show up. Any moment, that's what people say, be anxious for nothing. The moment you become the sin, doubt will be coming. Your faith will fail. Everything about you will fill with fear. And if any fear comes in your life, then no way out. Because fear will be talking to you. And I pray today that we we'll answer fear with faith in Jesus' name. Amen. I know because when we we'll answer that, God will give us a solution to our problem. In Jesus' name. Amen. He said, in midst of failure, success is not given better. In midst of failure, success is given better. That point in time when you thought it's the end of everything, it's when God will show up and show you as a success. Tell somebody, I am a success. Tell somebody else, I am a success, more success. Praise the Lord. So faith will help you to complete every promise of God in your life. If I must complete whatever God has destined in my life, it is only standing by faith. Completing the assignment God has given to you. Because every assignment that God has given to you is beyond human capacity, human capability. It's beyond. And you needed the hand of God to help you to be able to complete them. That's why you needed faith. In God, you go to your business by faith, marriage by faith, buy a car by faith, you drive it by faith, you start building a house by faith, you are into business by faith. It is only trusting the hand of God that the hand of God will come upon you and lead you to the level God wants you to be. Only by faith. With faith, everything is what possible. And you find that by faith, God is going to fight for you and give you victory. God is going to build you stronger to faith. Fear, you stand on the face of fear and now take away your victory. Without that particular faith, it becomes impossible for you to stand on the front of the obstacle that you know that is more stronger and mighty than you. We rely on the strength of the Lord. The battle is not ours, the battle is of the Lord. And when we trust the Lord, we become like Mount Zion. And you are unmovable. Tell someone, I am unmovable. It is the challenges that draw our faith out. Whenever you face challenges, it will draw our faith out. Challenges bring our faith out. When things are so working very well, you find that many people, when things are okay, when the million problem is going to show up, we build on our faith. I have to stand on the faith, even on what God said. You see, many of us, we recite so many positions in the Bible. Reviving it back to God, and God is saying so many things. Then we build it our faith. Before you know, your answer will come. I pray that somebody receive an answer this morning in Jesus' name. We guarantee victory of what we stand on the word of God. Your victory is being guaranteed when you stand on the word of God. Your victory is guaranteed when you stand on the word of God. And it is very, very important to stand on the word of God. No matter what ever come, stand on the word of God. Our obstacle is only a big as your space we give to it. The obstacle you face in life is as big. And the space we give to them, we allow in our mind and in our hearts. Many of us believe that our problem is bigger than God. We overestimate them that it's very big. And we estimate God that God is very small. It is according to the space I give to my trouble, my problem, in my heart and in my mind. And if really your problem is bigger than your whatever you think about, God will never show up. And that is why God said, you have to think about, think big, boast in the Lord. God said, I love a man that always boasts with me. That's exactly what David did. He boasted in the name of the Lord. Bible says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous, they are there, and they are all saved. Right in and you see the salvation of the Lord in your mind. Right in there, you see the hand of God upon your life. Wherever the finger of the Lord is pointing, he 
His heart is there to do more and help you. There's a help coming to your life this morning. I say, help is coming towards you this morning. Jesus name. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. Isaiah 26, we read verse 3. It says, verse 3. Thou will keep him in a perfect peace, whose mind stay on thee, because he trusted in thee. The original translation in Hebrew was saying, we will keep him in peace, peace. That what it means, shalom, peace in prosperity. The Lord will keep you peace in war, prosperity. That is, it's not in perfect, it's a peace, peace. That's the original translation in Hebrew. That the Lord will keep you in peace, peace. The, the Greek word, the, the Hebrew word for peace is shalom. That is peace in prosperity. That even in midst of trouble, you experience peace and you make it progress. Even when the world is turning outside, you find that there's a calmness in your life and you still make a progress, advancement in your life. You'll not be stagnant. You keep on moving forward. Our Lord is good. All the time. God wants to give us perfect peace when we keep our thoughts on Him. Promise to give us perfect peace when we keep our thoughts on Him. Thinking what God can do, not what the other man can do. We always say that what God cannot do, never do what exists. So God can do impossibility and make it possible. God can change impossibility to be possible. God can change the great man that is already there. He did it in Lazarus for how many days? Four good days. They call him Lazarus out. What are those things that the enemy are killing in your hand? By reason of faith, we are calling them to be alive from now in Jesus' name. Amen. Everything that you do that's slipping away from your hands, let them receive life. From now in Jesus, my children will pray. Yeah. What matters that have to follow God and relate with God is a condition of your heart. How you follow God is that you need to be by the condition of your heart. Then you came to the camp. I was asking questions concerning this man that I've been at, defying the eye of the armies of Israel. His elder brother, Elia, I'm sorry, he had him. I know you will come here. You should keep going. You will not do whatever they are telling you. They only say to go and take care of the flocks. They are coming here to ask about what is happening. He was filled with jealous and he went to criticize David. What are you coming here to do? David said, I'm not talking to you, I'm just asking questions. And when they asked the question, they took him to the king, Saul. And Saul was asking, Can we show can you show us your credential for being a soldier? He said, No, I've never been an army. I've never been an army at all. But I know that I was trained to fight. Let God that Bible. We see. He said, I'm not being in army, but I have been trained to fight. Now, first of all, 17. 34 to 36. And then he said unto Saul, that some have given the father sheep, and then come a lion and me, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went after him, and smote him, and delivered him out of his mouth. And when he rose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slain him. And if someone slain more the lion and me, and the uncircumcised nation shall be as one of them, seeing he had defied the armies of Israel. He will be like them. He, made, he professed his faith in the Lord Almighty that are giving him victory over all this lion. What do you say when the enemy faces you? Some people sing a song, Etoam Masedeki, your God in the Metua. Etoam Masedeki, Narekin. When you are dying, when you find that you are not getting an answer, it's never the will of God. Jeremiah 29, let me say, I know the thought I think towards you, thought of good, not of evil, to give you all and expect them. When things are not working well, it's not the will of God in your life. When you are not receiving the answer of a prayer, it's not will of God in your life. Stop singing that song. Ask him, I want to know what I be your thoughts over my life. He said, the thought I have acting towards you is thought of good, not of evil. God is not a God that sent you out and said great. When he sent you out to go and sell a sword, he said great to fall. Because no, if you didn't get to fall, the sword will spoil. God is God that sent you and go before you to make a cuckoo way smooth. I pray that every part you walk from this season, the Lord will go before you and cause them to be smooth in Jesus' name. Amen. David will not be able to say anything. Well, when he was saying, Professor is faith in the Lord, they were all laughing. 
Hey, this one more. You can't like it. You can't this one. No need. Then it's okay. So I say, okay, I'm gonna try. Let me try it. Because already fear of eating the king. So king was looking for who will fight for them. He already told them if you will fight, this is the promise. In God is all his gadgets for war. He becomes the fasting on David. Hold the helmets, hold the sweat, hold the shield, everything. David was putting on this. He said, no, no, it's not good on me. I can't wear it very heavy. I did not wear it before. Remove it. I'm not comfortable with this one. He was so comfortable with catapults and the five smooth stone. He ran to the water and gave first stone and got his catapults. Everybody, that's what we talk about with the cross things. How can you kill this giant with only catapults and a stone? How is it possible? A man that grown nine feet, you are just a lad of 17, 18 years, bare, not to six feet, facing a man of nine feet, very rich, and you are going to face him, not that you are carrying spare, you are carrying catapults and stone. Then we are all laughing. For the Bible, David said, the battle is of the Lord. You know that God has stood with me when I fed this particular lion and did in the forest. The same God will still be saying, This man here will fall from his head. I will use his sword to cut off his neck from his head. Everyone laughed. Saul was trying to look at him. Well, if perpetual he can be able to do this, it's over. God is not after the physical body of David, it was after, after the man said of David. Most of the problem we face in life, God is not after your physical body. God is after your mindset. It's not about the root. It's about the trust he had in the Lord Almighty. He said, this one is defying the iron armies of the Israel. Talking down the armies of Almighty God. He said, I will go after you. Where are the people recruiting you? Where have they mocked you? They look down on you, you are not capable. They call it your mountain. A young man from one of the movies that I watched many years, years back, almost back, said the guy is a trained character. All of a sudden, he was called upon when they saw what he did to begin to do street fight. He don't want to do it. And the boy he decided to stop. The young man that I hired him wanted to fight him. He was beating the young man. But the only thing that made this young man to get angry is saying, You are nothing. Because his main boss, the, 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 the boss, was telling him that fighting is you fight out of anger. You fight from inside, not from physical. You want it physical, but the battle is you fighting is from inside. When the man already got the ability, there's something he did. He pushed that air from inside him, he pushed the air. If he went and destroyed the heart of the man, he began to bleed and now go to speed of blood. And that's the end of that particular man. He didn't touch it. From inside, in the martial art, it's not all that they can have to to go. No, there are certain things that are staying in spirit realm inside them. Life was a child of God. There's a thing that stays inside you in spirit realm. Not only when you cast, you say, kiddy, kiddy. no, you don't need kiddy, kiddy. Speak the word, you get an answer. Some of us are afraid when they want to speak. I don't think God will answer me. Already, if you let me speak, I get no more answer. Build your faith in the word of God. Build faith around you, let there be people that are acquainted with the word of God. And many people that are not the word of God surround you. There are nothing you are going to do that are not going to receive results. And I pray that God will make a way for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, David trusted in his staff and sleep. He trusted in Catapult and the stone. Which is very funny. I'm telling you, very, very funny. How can you find a man that carry a spade that is more than five feet? And you carry catapult. The battle is already won from inside. That's why Bible say you are more than a conqueror. That means you already conquer before the battle starts. Therefore, you only come in to demonstrate the grace of God and the people will see the victory. And I pray in this season, God will give us victory in Jesus' name. Amen. He said, if every one of us, God already furnished us with exactly what we needed to complete our destiny on earth. 
God has already furnished us with exactly what we need to complete our destiny on earth. Every one of us, every battle you are going to experience in life, God has given you that grace to be able to win. Then it down with his own fear and conquer it. Psalm 23 verse 4. Even though if I walk through the valley of the Lord, I will fear no evil. He already dealt with it and conquered it. Glory to David and now despise him. One time back when you want to fight him. Look at this small rat. Look at the way they want, want to fight him. If he fights and he was saying so many things, David was furious inside. But he had the confidence in God's ability to give him victory. He confessed the battle is of the Lord, he trusted the Lord. And David engaged Goliath and destroyed Goliath. May today, may every Goliath in your life fall down in Jesus' name. Amen. They may look down on you, you are nothing. But I want to tell you, you are somebody. You are somebody in the Lord. They will look at you that you are not going to do anything. But he that is in you is greater than he that is war in the world. First Samuel 16, verse 7. First Samuel 16, I verse 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not in the countenance or the height of the statue, because I have refused him, for the Lord seen not as a man seeth, for man looking on outward appearance, but Lord looking on the hearts. The hearts. Not how tall, how huge, how big you are. But God is talking about the heart of a man. When your heart is right with God, everything is possible. The word of God is teaching us that God is not looking at your physical appearance, but God is looking at the strength of your hands. The measure of man is not, man is not measured by the physical appearance, but the condition of the heart of that particular person. What you believe and what you trusted in the Lord that will come, come to pass in your life, that's why you trust in the Lord. In the morning, I trust in Him. In the afternoon, I trust in Him. In the night, I trust in Him. Even in the days that when there's no help, I trust in Him. I remember the day I was telling you a story, we are driving. We came to a place before it about there There's nobody living there. The, road, the car stopped. I'm telling you honestly, if the headsmen come, there are no help. If the Boko Haram come, there are no help. But there's one thing I know. He that when the city place of Mosaic shall abide under the shadow of Almighty. There are so many people that go, they are shooting down, but they are running into a wood. They didn't know where they are in the night. Some of them are running into a pit. God kept them. Some of them see big fight on. Other people are being destroyed. Some people have a wound. You run and you come out. You are trusting in the Lord. You know no fear. You are stand on the face. Sometimes you are in a camp. The Lord will and the Lord will now talk from. But you, know, you are coming and standing and asking, are you from the same? How are they? God is standing with you. Walk in others cannot kill you. What stop others? And not stop you. Because you are different. You are designed. You are a special species from God that cannot be destroyed by man. That does not mean that man will not try you. That does not mean that Adam will not come. That does not mean that they will not attack. But the Bible says, in all these things that try you, I remain more than the world. They come back. I cannot go down. They will, I can't back down. I can't give up. I am trusting and believing in God. That my business will flourish. I'm trusting that my marriage will bring forth fruit. I'm trusting that my job will be a critical one. I'm trusting that I will be healed in my body. I believe in the Lord. It may not be so easy, but standing on your bed give your answer to all those questions. There will be so many questions in your mind. The only person that will answer is when you stand with God. God is going to give you answers to them one by one. And before you know it, the fear of all those things will be gone out of your life. I pray that every fear will disappear in Jesus' name. Amen. And the fear that comes here, let them be totally crushed in Jesus' name. Amen. I said something here, I said, faith is a full-grown offspring of hope. Faith is full of offspring of what? Of hope. Full of spring, grown offspring of what? Hope. Faith is full-grown offspring of faith. And when you have hope, you have belief. And being concluded by faith. There are three of them. But the faith is the conclusion of three of them. Full grown offspring of hope. That's what faith is all about. 
I will have hope and believe, follow it, and it will be concluded by faith. So if you believe, you have hope, and you believe, if it's not concluded by faith, there's no result. That's why I say faith without corresponding action is what? Death. That was the corresponding action. I believe and I stand on it. I act on it. You must act on it. I believe I'm blessed. You don't show that blessing. No. It will not manifest. I say that God is anticipation of the favorable outcome. It is tied on your desire. Hope is anticipation of a favorable outcome and is tied on your desires. I am anticipating that good things are coming on my way. And it's through my desire that all those things are going to show up. If you don't desire for anything, it's not going to show up. It is an expectation of a favorable outcome. And it is tied on your wall, your desires. Praise the Lord. And again, I say, hope this is signified. Okay, hope signifies what you want God to perform on your life. Perform on your behalf, sorry. You say, hope. Signify what you want God to perform on your behalf. So hope, without faith, there's no answer to faith, hope. Without faith, there's no answer to hope. First of all, hope. God told us that faith is now. Hope is about future. But in fact, many children of God are thinking about hope instead of thinking about faith. I have this particular box in my hand. I have faith, I will have it. No. You have faith when there is no anything. Everything is void. And I have faith that I can be able to proclaim them when I speak and I stand on my face. Yes, my womb are not carrying baby, but I believe I speak. Very soon I will carry baby. Yes, I'm not getting the job. I'm standing on my face. I will get a nice job. Yes, I'm not here when I know my husband is coming. Yes, I'm not going to the house. I know God is leaving my own house. Hope will be there to give me a summons to faith. There is something I'm expecting. And I'm standing on my faith to get the answer. If you are not expecting anything, there is no way the answer will come. Trust in the Lord. He will give you the desires of your heart. Desires of your heart. Praise the Lord. It inspired by favorable experiences of others. That's what people always do. They were told they to Abraham. God bless him with a child at the old age. They told him Samson. They told him Jacob. They talk about Gideon. When you hear about them, you have a hope that very soon I'm going to enjoy a memorable condition. That's what he's trying to show you. You learn it from other people. But the learning from other people will not give you results. You stand on your faith to get your own particular result you want. How long is good? Faith is the final step to the conclusion of all these things. Final step, concluding all these things. It is faith by faith that you step up from your hand that you are coming to church. I know that the God has something for me this morning. If you know that God has something for you this morning, can I hear me that amen? Amen. Yeah. It's a faith is the courage to act with only the assurance that, that, that one of you have, that you have placed your faith in God. Assurance that I place my faith in God, that whatever I ask him, we shall you come to pass. The assurance. I acted, and I placed it on the Lord Almighty, that whatever I ask you, surely come to pass. That would mean faith. You don't ask God what you don't feel that, or think, or what you don't believe that will come to pass. You must say, I don't think believing will make put, now, put you in the right position, but faith will give you exactly what you are asking God. That I believe something does not mean that you have it. God will bless you, I believe. You are not going it. The only way you can be able to, when you begin to act by faith, it becomes reality to us. If Jesus gave me the presence by his strike, we are being healed. You have to act on it. So that by his strike reality, I have get hold in my body. And I pray that you will be healed this morning in Jesus' name. Yeah. We look at the woman of uh, the issue of God. Woman of the issue of God, bleeding for how many years? But she believed the Lord that if you touch the hands of the clothes, I shall be made one. She's not ashamed. 
Bible says from his house, he made up our mind and said what he wanted. He don't want anybody. I know the condition. I know the fear. I will die. They will stop me. Anyone that I see in her period don't have any right to come back. If they come and do the law, choose the law of the Jews. If they find out you is stoned to death, the woman she made up her mind, I don't care if they give me, I'm already dead. But I made up my mind if I can touch the hands of the cloth. In the midst of the cloud, crowd, the woman was moving, penetrating, moving in the crowd, until now touched the hands of his cloth. But Christ was not start something and said, Who touched me? Somebody said, Ah, Peter said, Ah, oh. uh, Rabbi, what are you talking? We have more than 5,000 people surrounding you. You are asking who touched you. Yes, there's a physical touch, there's a spiritual touch. Some people are touching physical, but she touched the supernatural touch that got her healed. And Jesus Christ wanted to remind many people that sitting down that there's a touch you can touch and get their healing, not ordinary thing touching. The woman touched spiritual healing, touched. He believed that when I touched, I made whole. He believed in touching, she was made whole. And I believe this morning that our touch and our desire will be a touch of faith. And they will receive our healing in Jesus' name. Amen. You will receive their healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Trusting him and believing in him. Don't go there and uh, they say. Some people just walk in and just they say, let us go. I remember a, a daughter and a mother came here on Thursday. I the father that God is so wonderful serving so many people. When the Lord is going to talk to the woman, I say, if we say one, see me yes. He said, if we say we have a wine, I mean, no, he was in here. And I don't know whether for her, I don't know which wine. Yeah, why not? Or should they be done? He said, because of that, they see everything you are doing. A grown up woman, I said, it's supposed to be a water, a water of goddess priest, yes. And you see, they, they will turn to you upside down. She refused. But that day, God gave her the healing and the deliverance you have to take for her the rest of her life. They will be attacking you. These are not small. If you don't know, you know because of God's grace, you will see the person running, acting like a mad person. Do you want to say, yes, sir? Most of the time they will come. I will watch them. That is, she's seeing vision in a wrong way. I said, go no, now, order your step, cause you to see the right thing. Let him doctor see vision, pastor see vision. But what are you exactly are you seeing? And if you refuse to do that thing, you become a war, you become a battle. And that is the one we need to stick with God. Someone said, they called one of brother told me, he said, they told him to come, they will, I said, you are just, you are fooling yourself. They called to play, come, they didn't do that thing, you come, go to do, they make the doctor say, look at you. They are going back to village. Every day they carry one sack by, they go up and down. They send out to Mara, go here. They will do that thing. They will go, 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 they Before I know, don't you know that I am chief priest now? Start for yourself. Praise the Lord. In the presence of God, there are some of God that are born, those things so. By the power of God, they change them, transform you. To be a minister in God's gospel. Yes. They transform us. There are some of them people here, so they are dainty in their families too much that they come on top of them. And God the tell them, say, you are not going to follow this way, this is the way you are going to follow. And they come to the gospel, and you see them very powerful. How all is good. So that's why you have to, whenever God calls you, you will do what? You will answer. Any moment God calls you, answer God. I said, today is your day of liberty in Jesus' name. Amen. And today is your day of favor, because your favor will come in Jesus' name. Amen. Take a step and trust in the Lord. Yes. Trust in the Lord. That thing that seems impossible is possible with God. That is thing that nobody can be able to help you. God will help you. I remember a woman that had been crying, they wanted to repatriate his son from abroad. She was crying. Two weeks I said, don't worry. When they come say, thank you, God, I've already saved my son. I will imagine when you are living in abroad, they bring you to Nigeria. Sure, the whole world will turn to hell. Hello? You are in abroad. 
and they said they are going to bring you back to the cross. In short, the best thing was some of us say, let me drink poison and die. You know what it takes him to run away from this country? And you wanted to bring him back again because of one paper or the other. The guy said, God, help me out. I don't want to come back. At least I know through that particular boy, he's a home to his mother. At least if not one hero, two hero, five hero, he said to her mother, her mother will be using to take care of his son. Now coming back here, you'll be looking at him, she'll be looking at her. Every day, mama, give me five naira, I need to buy you pure water. You never know what it means that you're grown up, you're asking, asking your mother money. I told the story of a young man here that he came to look for a job. So many churches he would go to. They would tell drop 100,000 before they pray for you get a job. The man told him, he said, sir, pray that I will get a job. My first salary, take it. The man said, get out. He wanted another one more, get out. He came here. He didn't even know. He said, he was one day a friend came to him. And he said, I want to eat. He said, brothers, I didn't tell you. We know there's food for him. Me and my wife, we no food. All we are getting is for my mom to finish cooking so they can give us some portion of food that we can eat. And that particular food is our morning and afternoon and the night. A graduate. The guy I just brought 3,000 naira. He said, go and buy a spaghetti. Buy fish. Buy this one. They cook. He said, that particular spaghetti, they eat it for three days. They cook it and preserve it. Yes. Until when God answer them without collecting shish for you. Today, tomorrow you say, Pastor, I have another place like, with my CD, they are calling me. They say, they are asking to pay me 270,000 naira a month. Imagine that. I said, God will make a way where there's no way in your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Trust him and believe. Let me tell you, those people you are hearing about their testimony, they are not better than you. They are not better than you. Their own time will soon come. And you will smile in Jesus' name. Yeah. Remember, out of hardest things, we test in the world. When things are very, very hard, is when God shows his strength. Yes, if you touch anybody now, everybody, every country is very hard. If you go to the market to go and buy everything, you see the rate of things going high. I remember when you buy a cattle of tomatoes, maybe around 12,000, 16,000. You go down 32,000 naira. 32. When you buy oil, maybe 5 liters or 10 liters, you buy around 4,000 naira, 35. If you go down 9,000 naira, you don't want to buy stay here. Gary, how much? Five. Eh? Two five. Two five. They pay top, yeah? Yes. That is daily need, you know? Rice, don't fly. Yeah? No, but I don't know the way. Eh? Cross and this thing. We're not talking about this anymore. No go. All those things that are nutrient, nutritious to our body, they want to take it out, especially this. Air is how much? And the creator of you look at what you are buying for that, and the way you're looking at it. If they remove one, if you fall down, you will cry for one. You'll be very careful not to fall one, not to fall down. But the only way that three men can fall down is how much you're eating, then you go and buy another one. If anyone makes a mistake to fall one, eh, you use the amount to finish the person. Where they are learning, it will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. God will save us. You are not being successful based on what the government are doing. He said, My Lord will supply all your need according to my according to his own riches in Christ's glory. You see everybody in pain. Affliction of pain. Most of us still standing because of we have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you. He made a mistake. God of those days, each food that threw away does me. Hello? If any of your child made a mistake, one may I throw it away. You hear someone. You will hear someone. Someone. You throw it away. Finish it, finish it, finish it. Finish it. Finish it. Finish it. Finish it. God will help us in Jesus' name. God will take away Christ and wipe away our tears. I'm going to frustrate our enemies in Jesus' name. Amen. A man that I'm being in the pool, John 
chapter 5. He didn't place his hope in the pool. He was trusting the pool that he was going to get his hand into the pool, through the pool. But one day, every time the pool had been stirred by the angel, the Spirit of the Lord, he couldn't shake up it. He couldn't go into the water. And the Lord made it possible then for 38 years, this man had been beside the pool. 38 years. He was there before Jesus Christ was born. And Christ showed up. I said, man, what do you want me to do for you? You might be going to talk blah, 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 blah. Like some of you. Ask some of us to write prayer requests. Go and read that prayer request. Some of us are repeating what they ask. God will give me favor. God will give me favor of money. God will give me favor of favor, favor, favor. Some of them, sentimentally, are writing so many things. Because the way it's, the way it is from their heart, you want to show God. There are nothing you want to say that God has never known. I don't have anyone to help me. Before I can get up, someone else will go in. If you look at the man, it's very, very lazy. Very lazy. For 38 years. Ah, cross. Look at 38 days. 38 years, he has been trying. Someone else will go inside. Before we get up, so may it not be a portion in Jesus' name. Amen. That before they stay the water, I will run in. I also say, the end of the room, I carry my mouth close to the brim of that particular room. I carry a stick. So if you know they tell, I just put my stick and I will resign. But I know there's a reason why Jesus Christ allows such. He walked to the man. What do you want me to do for you? Look at me. Sir, I don't have anybody to help you. Before I can go inside, someone will say, what do you want me to do for you? Take your mouth and do what? Go. I like that giving. May we receive that giving from now in Jesus' name. Amen. I really want God to change my condition. I will stand by my faith. 